Imagine if there was a language created especially for you, a language that used symbols and stories uniquely suited to your life's path and purpose. A language so precise and elegant, it could reveal to you insights that you couldn't receive any other way. Imagine that this language had been familiar to human beings for thousands of years, but had been almost completely lost in your own culture. And what if you were given regular opportunities to learn this language, to practice it, and to gradually become more fluent, even though it would probably always remain largely a mystery? The dreams that come to human beings at night, they have been described as such a language. There are people among us who are particularly fluent in the language of dreams. One of us, Jean van Bronckhorst, is with us today. But Jean is by no means the only Unitarian Universalist who has engaged in the deep and meaningful exploration of dreams. Reverend Jeremy Taylor, who lived from 1943 to 2018. Jeremy Taylor was the co-founder of the International Association for the Study of Dreams. In his book, The Wisdom of Your Dreams, he wrote that dreams come in the service of the individual dreamer's health and wholeness by speaking in a universal language of archetypal symbol, and metaphor. He also said that the generic message of every remembered dream is wake up, pay attention. He revealed how dreams can be used to support our growth and our development in every facet of life, including becoming awake to our unconscious biases. That is, our attitudes which create the barriers to full inclusion that we as Unitarians are trying so hard to remove. <laughs> having, it's funny, I'm having the same sort of trouble Leslie was having. <laughs> I've had a, a weird window up here blocking my script right now. So I'm just gonna go out and come back in. <laughs> That's one of those, one of those weird, weird things. Okay. And it's telling me it's time for me to do my wordle. I don't want to do my wordle. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Reverend Taylor revealed how dreams can be used to support our growth and development in every facet of life including becoming awake to our unconscious biases, our attitudes which create the barriers to full inclusion that we as Unitarians are trying to remove. Reverend Taylor went so far as to say that in his view, all collective prejudice and oppression, including our destruction of the planet, is the result of unconscious projection onto others of repressed and rejected aspects of ourselves. He wrote, if we are to survive, we must learn as much about our own unconscious depths and creative possibilities as we know about the structure of the atom and the makeup of the stars. Our dreams, he wrote, are an indispensable key to that learning. We must consciously explore this realm further. We can afford to wait no longer. This past weekend, I was able to attend a talk by poet Kathy Smith Bowers, who said that the kingdom of heaven is within you, and it is a dialogue between the conscious and the unconscious. The kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is within you, and it is a dialogue with, between the conscious and the unconscious. In her talk, she held up the value, indeed the sacredness, of the images that arise for us in dream work 
as well as in every form of creative expression. I share her belief that our lifelong dialogue with those symbols and images can lead us ever more deeply into the heart of life so that we may join more freely with others in the urgent work of love and justice. As Unitarian Universalists, we have been blessed with the invitation to engage in a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Sometimes that search takes us outside ourselves and other times it leads us within. To tell us more about how dreaming can be part of our awakening and to share her own personal and powerful experience with the wisdom of dreams, it's my great pleasure to introduce Jean van Bronckhorst. Hello, thank you. So I'm gonna talk about dreams from a really personal standpoint. Um, my dreams really set my life on a path full of wonder from my earliest childhood. I had really vivid dreams and some of them were powerful enough to stay with me for decades. My parents encouraged me to ignore them and get on with more serious work, especially as I grew older but the great joy and freedom I so often experienced in dreams kept me circling back to them. I studied psychology in part to understand how we can imagine our lives, both awake and asleep. And when I worked in hospice care as a social worker, supporting the dying and their families, I listened in awe to the ways dreams and dream sharing helped people find peace and reconciliation courage and hope in their last months of life. In my life, I have built a partnership with my dreams based on four ideas, that dreams are fundamentally us, that dreams are meaningfully connected to our waking life, that we can build our dreaming skill like any other skill, and dreams can open us to something greater than us, to our community, to our families, to the world, and to the mystery beyond understanding. So I wanna tell you about all of this through a recurring nightmare I had. Um, through my childhood, I was chased in my dreams by Sasquatch, Bigfoot. Um, and each time I was terrified, running through a dark forest and hearing it roar behind me, knowing if it caught me, it would kill me. I always woke up before that happened, but I hated this dream. Um, didn't know what to do with it. When I was 22, I had the nightmare again, but this time I told someone who understood dreams and she asked me, well, why is it chasing you? I said, I had no idea. And she suggested next time I should turn around and ask it. And my first response was, is, is that even legal? <laughs> Everyone I knew had told me the best way to handle nightmares was to ignore them, to shut them down, to focus on reality and they will go away. No one ever said I should invite them to talk to me. The next week I had the dream again. And I remembered as I was running to ask this question. So I turned around and pretty much shrieked at it. Why are you chasing me? And Bigfoot stopped and he caught this confused look on his face. And he said, you asked me to chase you, didn't you? I'm showing you how I guard your treasure. I was astounded. I caught my breath and told him, I don't want you to chase me anymore. I don't like it. And um, what treasure. <laughs> so this idea of consciously interacting with dream figures, either in the dream or in our imagination when we are awake, is grounded on these first two ideas I mentioned, that dreams really are us. They come for our benefit. They come, as Jeremy Taylor said, for our healing and wholeness. We have one brain that experiences life from both waking and dreaming perspectives. We have one heart, one life. This was my dream, my monster, my fear, my need, and my decision to eventually confront that fear. 
When I remember that my dreams are really there to talk to me about my life, it is easier to see that they come for my benefit. Psychologists say dreams give us a space, a safe space for experiencing strong emotions, working out life challenges. Even the scary ones can give us valuable insights. The union goal of integration includes embracing parts of ourselves that we might not recognize or accept at first, and we often encounter these aspects in dreams first. At 22, I was not ready to embrace this monster part of me. But now that I was talking to him instead of running away, it put me into a brand new dream. So after I asked what the treasure was, Bigfoot led me back through the forest, regaling me with stories of other people he had chased away, acting it all out like, rawr, I, and then I did this, rawr, until we came to a cave. And inside, the walls were glittering with beautiful jewels, sapphires, rubies, emeralds, amber, he led me to a small recess in the wall that held just for me dozens of gleaming jewel encrusted shoe horns. <laughs> that made me laugh. And I woke up and I haven't been chased by anything since then. When I learned to turn around, my dreaming mind created a new habit that turns any chase now into a confrontation or discussion. Just out of habit, I turn around and say, use your words, I don't wanna be chased. So it leads me to the third idea, which is that dreaming really is a skill that can be learned like any other skill. I learned to dream more effectively to keep some of my personal autonomy, which turns out to be a really common practice outside of Western culture. Anthropologists say there are 4,000 living cultures in the world today and 90% of them teach their children how to take an active part in their dreams. Practicing just a few skills can help us develop a meaningful dream life. When we take a moment just to remember our dreams, we're building our mental capacity, our neural pathways to remember more. When we tell our dreams as a story, first this happened and then that, we teach our brains to put future dreams into more story-like forms. When we explore a dream's connection to our waking life, we're teaching our dreams to become more clearly connected to our lives. Less nonsense, more stories, more relevance. For a long time, I remembered that chasing dream as the time I learned that I could push back at monsters. I considered the jewel-encrusted shoehorns just a bit of nonsense, a nice fluffy ending to a scary nightmare. After all, the jewels destroyed the shoehorns' only real function, something my science rational parents would have found hilarious. But the dream stayed with me. The chase, the turnaround, the cave, the treasure, the shoehorns. The images seemed alive in me, waiting for me. Many years later, I revisited this dream when I was thinking about how shoehorns help get our feet into smallest shoes and are designed primarily to protect the shoes. And then I realized big feet have big soles underneath. And I realized soul and soul, S-O-U-L, are really close. And suddenly I was thinking about how hard I had tried to fit my dreaming soul into my very rational upbringing. Maybe the jeweled shoehorns reflected my ambivalence, caught between wanting to be seen as rational, because I am rational, and wanting the treasure of my dreams. Maybe the jewels were telling me to stop trying so hard to fit in. I was asking myself important questions. How will I treasure something seemingly so irrational? How do I embrace the beauty of my one precious dreaming life and still belong with those I love? And as I eventually claimed the monster within me, how do I keep this treasure safe without chasing everybody away? These have become important spiritual questions for me. Every night, all mammals on earth, plus fish and birds and who, will know, who knows who else, seamlessly we shift into the altered state of consciousness of sleep. At least for humans, we then experience an inner world where we play and fight with emotions and metaphors, chasing monsters and jewels and mysteries. How we respond, dismiss them as nonsense, admire their beauty, 
wonder at their incomprehensibility, explore their meanings, push back or hide or integrate them into our lives. All of these are spiritual decisions. I've come to believe that dreams are one of the greatest underutilized emotional resources we possess. If only we could learn to understand, recognize them and appreciate them, understanding comes much later. With only the rarest of exceptions, dreams exist to help us. They can open us to mysteries and treasures that lie just beyond our waking rational understanding. Dreams have really enriched my whole life. I learned how to work with them. I learned how to bring them into my waking life. So when I'm facing a big life decision, I look for dreams to show me how I really feel or imagine the different paths, decision paths I see. When I'm missing the people I love, I reach out in my dreams and connect with them again. Dreams have given me warnings of danger I was ignoring, suggested creative solutions to problems, and reminded me of the bigness of creation and my place here and how I want to live my life. They have both challenged me and reassured me, often at the same time. And I love sharing this treasure. If you want to learn more about dreams and dreaming, send me an email. I'm in the directory. I run a monthly meetup group on dreams and connect you and can connect you to resources or professional dream workers in the GTA. So I wish you all many good dreams. Challenging, profound, funny, frightening, life-sustaining dreams. Thank you. <laughs>